We don't like to bring it up above. We don't like to bring it right at the tip because as things compact and settle, this liner can actually work up and sit and flex back and forth and you'll never get that covered again. So it'll always just be a nuisance. So Brian's always taught us to try to be conscious about bringing it down below. And typically we usually set our transit once we're done using it in the pond to set all our rocks. We'll go ahead and we'll set it three inches higher than water level and that'll allow us to go through and make sure that our edges are 100% above waterline. Instead of just guessing, just being like, hey, there's the water line is there and you can't transfer it to the back of the rocks and then you could get thrown off and then you're gonna have to come back for a leak in the near future. And so if we have that transit, it's a lot easier to go through and hear that beep and then be like, all right, keep moving on. All right, so this is the footprint of our wetland right here. So these are where our small aqua blocks that are piled up right there are gonna go. We're gonna go ahead and start digging that. Corey and Luis are doing a fantastic job just kind of finishing off the pond edge along that backside. You've got Dan and the new guy, Gary, over there finishing up that edge. And then Jack's over here buttoning up this intake bay area, which is, in my opinion, a lot of fun because this is where you just kind of get to be artistic and really focus on the shape of it. And you kind of do what, do what you want over here, right? We have plenty of liner to choose from. I don't know if you like the stump that I brought in from the old pond. You can move it. I just yeah. put it there playing around. But Jack is going to take over while I start digging and he's gonna to explain to you kind of what his vision is. So right now we set these two rocks and as you can see right here, we have this liner and this liner right now is gonna act as our weir as like we have in our skimmer box. And so it's gonna force all that water to get drawn on top of these two rocks and drawn between these two frame rocks. So it's gonna allow all that water and all that surface debris that comes in from the pond. It's gonna allow it to be caught in this area and so it allows the homeowner to come over there and take skimmer net and skim out all the debris that collects in this area. And right now we have our key frame rocks that we set with the excavator and you can see there's a bunch of liner that we still have to trim up, but we're pretty much gonna come in like all right here, there, and here, and over there. We're gonna take these cobble beaches, kind of like what we did over there. We're gonna do that all in here. And so it's really gonna allow us to get creative with the shape of the feature and fill in the gaps between our key rocks. And as you can see, Chris added that uh, piece of driftwood that was in from the existing feature and it looks pretty good. I like how he kind of carved it in here. Or not really carved it, but there's a natural curve to it and he really matched it up well with that rock. And right there is gonna be our overflow because everything slopes away into that area towards between the truck and the hovels over there. So we're gonna take our overflow and make a dry stream bed going all back into the swale just so if when this pond does overflow, it'll escape into the yard and then go towards the street. Dan, what are you doing? I got Gilly Gilly with me, good guy. So I'm showing him how to do edges and I told him we're gonna start over here at the top, work our way over towards the intake base. We got these, everything rocked in, everything's ready to be back full and work done. So we came in, we started trimming our liner back. And as I was telling him, we can always come back in and trim more as we go versus having to put it back on. Always leave yourself that extra slack, especially coming over here into this hard curve where the liner's stretched. We're gonna need an extra to be able to pull that liner in and stretch it and get everything back in. On the straight edge, our water line, our water level is about six inches below where we're at. We're gonna go ahead and leave a little bit of extra just in case we gotta come back and adjust edges once we get things real up and running. We've got something to play with and then we can always trim it off. But come in, we always try to come about a half inch below the top of the surface we're edging against. Once we know that we're plenty high above water level, so that's where the transit comes in, establishing the water level, we'll kind of periodically check it as we go. We've done that as we've built everything, so we already kind of know where our water level is across this section. But we don't like to bring it up above, we don't like to bring it right at the tip because as things compact and settle, this liner can actually work up and sit and flex back and forth and you'll never get that covered again. So it'll always just be a nuisance. So Brian's always taught us to try to be conscious about bringing it down below. And typically we usually set our transit once we're done using it in the pond to set all our rocks. We'll go ahead and we'll set it three inches higher than water level. And that'll allow us to go through and make sure that our edges are 100% above water line. Instead of just guessing, just being like, hey, there's the water line is there and you can't transfer it to the back of the rocks and then you could get thrown off and then you're gonna have to come back for a leak in the near future. And so if we have that transit, it's a lot easier to go through and hear that beep and then be like, all right, keep moving on. Exactly. So another thing that I was telling Garrett about is- Dust. Uh, Gary, Gary, you wanna watch the fabric, especially if there's any overlap. You don't wanna make the mistake of your underside of the liner being tucked up against with it or with it because what will happen is if water wicks up. What's that? I wonder how many times you're gonna fold it before you start throwing dirt back behind there. 
Oh, four more. Four more? Okay. You keep interrupting? <laughs> but what'll happen is... Multiple languages? Is that what's taking so long? Subtitles. Turn to the subtitles. I mean, Chris, you taught us French. We gotta, you gotta practice in I'll French. I'll try in Spanish this time. Is that what you're doing in French? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, what will happen is this will become a wicking blanket and it will actually suck water out of your pond. You'll lose water thinking you have a leak. So we're going to come through and trim that off and then we'll start tucking our liner and bringing our dirt up against it. As you can see, this is the final product. Here's the step and there's the dirt. You can't tell there's any liner there. We just gotta bring up their dirt a little bit higher here and we're good to go. And as you can see, crazy man over there is still digging a hole to China over there. I know, look at him and his element. We got the hole excavated for the aqua block where the welling's gonna go. We went down three feet deep. Now we made Jack feel guilt, so he gave Corey the steps. And now he's acting like All right, that's enough of your talking. Right now, you can see that they are excavating for our, or our snorkel. It's gonna go down at the bottom and our centipede. And pretty much right where Gary is standing is where the snorkel is gonna go. And then the centipede is gonna lay along this trench where Dan's digging out right now. So guys, a little wet outside. DK Team Aquascape coming at you. We are a wrap on this rec pond project. This thing turned out absolutely phenomenal. I know I say it every time I'm on here, but it really, really did. This one is by far our team's top three this year that we've built. We've kind of pulled all the stops out on this rec pond. Intake bay, wetland filter, expanded the pond to probably three times the size of what it was. Did some berms, really turned this thing into a type of wilderness setting. And the really, really cool part of it, I'm gonna show you real quick here in a second, is these chairs that the homeowners built themselves. We added this little beach area. This is gonna be a great sitting area. And the reason being is that view right there. But not only that view, all of this view as well. We did a DG patio, dressed that up from the original construction Chris did about four years ago. We didn't do anything up there in the stream, in the waterfalls area, other than just do a, a simple rinse and cling. But basically right outside this bridge 
area. We started, we took out the old pond that basically just kind of went in through here and back here, and we really opened this thing up. We added these awesome flagstone steps going down into the pond, added some lights, we did the wetland filter up there, we did the intake bay, which is gonna be a great way for them to maintain this so they're not out here twice a day messing with a skimmer basket, especially with fall coming and the leaves, they can just come out here as time allows with their net, scoop out a few net fulls of leaves, and then sit back in these awesome chairs and just enjoy it. We did an overflow dry creek bed, which we know works, because we definitely dialed this thing all the way up to the full level, and then some. We did all these nice little rolling berms back in here, some boulder work. We got one last little tree to the plant, and then we got everything graded and seeded. Corey and Louise and Gilly Gilly did a great job putting this patio together, dialing everything back in to match the original. There's our favorite volunteer, Jack, guys? doing his thing. This is why we keep him, for the time being anyway. Yeah. All in all, really, really happy with how this thing turned out. And that being said, it's been a long day. I'm gonna go over here, kick my feet in the water, enjoy these chairs, but I'm actually gonna go swimming. I'm gonna uh, break this thing in right for him. And beyond that, I hope you guys enjoyed. Keep coming back every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. Tell all your friends, because we don't have a lot of friends and we need more friends, yeah, just like you guys. More friends. more friends! It's what keeps Jack and I going through our day every day, building these awesome projects to showcase to you guys. So that being said, we will catch you on the next one. Now I know why Greg loves his job.